Welcome back to BioML in Python. In this lesson, we will speak about data wrangling and visualization in Python. Before we begin, let's review what should have already been cleared up from the first lesson and address some of the common issues that people face. So a lot of people come to the lessons and they start with installing a developer environment or trying to figure out where am I actually going to run this code. And so several things that we discussed in the first course, in the first lesson, uh, we talked about different developer environments like Visual Studio Code, PyCharm, online notebooks like Colab, Jupyter Notebooks. And then we talked about some of the requirements. You have to install Python on your system. You have to install these packages, Pandas and NumPy. So first of all, how do you install Python on your computer? You have to install Python and check that it is installed correctly. So sometimes you will have it installed, but it might be installed in a different uh, portion, in a different folder structure. So you have to be able to find it. There are several different ways to do that. You can use uh, installation through pip install, or sometimes even through a packaged install called conda. Uh, it might make some of the installation simpler because it can install everything at once. Now you can check that it has been installed. For example, if Python is already installed on your Mac computer, you can simply type Python 3 inside your terminal, and that means you can start giving commands in Python just like you would if you were writing a script. Uh, sometimes you can also check what all is installed, what version is installed, so try to look for those things on your computer. So then we talked about installing developer environments. So for example, here you can see a developer envi environment in Visual Studio Code. What this environment provides you with is ability to uh, write correct syntax to make sure that you have everything installed and it will provide you with some suggestions. And you can also check different aspects like your syntax, uh, debugging your code and storing all of the objects in a format that you can easily find and explore your active uh, objects inside your project. So then in the first lesson, we also learn, learned about how to use some of these important packages that allow us to work with matrices and data frames. And so these packages have to be, again, installed on your computer. So sometimes if something's not working and it's giving you an error, you don't have pandas, what is PD, what is NP, that means you have not installed it. So besides Python itself, make sure that you install them. Again, use that using pip install or conda. So you can install all of that, and then you should be able to load data and explore that data and manipulate that data using different commands. Now, we also showed how to use Jupyter Notebooks, and we showed it on Google Colab. This is a very useful way to share your code with different explanations, images. You can uh, do styling inside the, the text in between the portions of code and even add videos. But remember, the session is running on the cloud. So anyone getting your notebook would also need to have access to the exact same files that you are using. So this is an example of the full notebook on, on Google Colab. And that notebook link is in the first lesson. So you can just open it copy it over to your Google Drive. Now you have to make sure that you've got the right files. How to make sure that you have the files. First of all, if you use any kind of a file and you wanna uh, run it on Google Colab, the best way is to create a repository on GitHub. GitHub allows you to get access to raw files. So right here, you can see that you can create a new repository and then you can load. So right here, you can see that is the actual location of the file, and it has to be the raw file. So you have to provide access to raw file, just like you can see in the screen above. So after you have placed the file or have gotten the link to the raw file, you can load it into your uh, code. So what does this file actually look like? We talked about two different types of files. One file, as you can see here, is a table. Another one in the introduction to Python is a series of strings or a string object that you can manipulate with uh, other types of methods. But here we're going to be talking a lot about these tables. And the tables have column names, they have row names, and then they have numeric data. And so when you load your data in Python, you want to be able to make sure that you assign different parts of this data set to different objects. For example, here you have the full data set loaded from CSV. 
And so when you load it from CSV, you have to specify the separating symbol in the CSV. And then you can check what is in my data. And so there was also a, uh, an example notebook of how to go through these steps and try out different types of data, TXT, CSV, and different separators inside those formats. Now, once you load your data, there's essentially a way to start assigning different parts of the data to different objects. For example, we can create an object, as you can see here, we can call an object by its name, by a column name or a row name, the column names should be in the header. So it's important when you're loading that your header is assigned. Once your header is assigned, you can call any name from the header. Like you can see df.id, df tree, you can just call them by name. Or you can also use uh, a way to call rows. For example, you can see df.iloc, that will give you a position. So you have to specify the actual position of that row and the rows start from zero. So zero, one, two, three, etc. So df iloc one would be specimen two. You also can specify this first column to be the index column. So the header is on top, the index is your column. And so then you can call these rows by name like specimen two, specimen one, or others. Let's see how to apply the syntax to the challenge of visualization. There are three different types of visualizations that we will talk about in detail, bar plots, box plots, scatter plots. Later on, you will also be able to explore other types of plotting that are going to be useful for this kind of data. So what kinds of plots are typically used? When you have categorical data, when you have, for example, samples, and what types of samples they are. So for example, control, uh, condition one, condition two, those are groups, and then sample one, sample two, sample three, sample four, etc. To organize your data, for example, I want to just select controls and see all the samples in their data, you can use what's called cross tabs. When you have data that can be summarized by such groups, you oftentimes want to see distribution, mean, median, and variability within each group. And for that, you typically can use box plots. So it's a combination of categorical data and numeric data. When you have two types of uh, numeric data, you oftentimes want to compare them. And that is most uh, useful with scatter plots. We'll talk about scatter plots a lot in some future lessons. And finally, bar plots. Bar plots are typically the very basic type of a plot. So you want to maybe show how one gene is expressed or how multiple genes are expressed compared to each other. So we'll talk in a little bit about how to do that. So the first uh, type of visualization we'll talk about is a bar plot. In pandas, this is actually done in a very uh, uh, neat way. Pandas will utilize another package called matplotlib, which is a library of visualization in Python. And here you can see that just simply calling your object, so remember that uh, PD is pandas. Pandas has a function. So for example, plot is the function. Then what type of a function, bar. And then you say what objects and what settings would you like to use. And you can write all of that out in a single line. As you can see right here, one line is just making this plot with the title, with the rotation of your sample names and calling a title, giving a title specifically to this uh, uh, plot. So then you can also sometimes realize that the scale of your bar plot is not good for visualization. So some uh, genes will have scale that is very different for low expression, very small, for high expression, very high. So how do you normalize it so that you can actually compare them? One way to do that is just to adjust the scale. So instead of plotting in true scale, you plot in logarithmic scale. So you can see that's logi equals true. So it's logarithm of y. The y is the axis y. And then that will be scaled to logarithmic scale. And you can also modify your plots. For example, rotating the titles of your x-axis is just rot, arrow, R-O-T, and you can also give titles. So some additional things you can add to the plot. Sometimes you would like to look at your data from a different perspective. For example, transposing your table. So instead of plotting 
how one gene is expressed in different samples, you want it to be a gene across samples, right? So for that, you can use transpose. The command is just dot T. So you can see all of this information just again fits into a single line. And then finally, sometimes you want to compare them to each other and maybe they're in different scales. So you don't want to put them into one single plot. And so for that, you can use subplots equals true. Another type of visualization is a box plot. So again, you can see pandas plot and then instead of bar here you write box again you can use all of the same settings and calling the right objects inside including logarithmic scale to make those box plots more visible again it's a typical problem that we will address in our future lesson about normalization and scaling now oftentimes you want to use box plots like we said in the beginning to actually organize the data by group so we're not interested in a box plot of an individual gene but we're interested in averages of genes across different groups so in the exercise given to you in the lesson you will find that you can read a code where by group you can summarize your data by uh, samples organized into groups and that is done it with this function group by so you group by so first you prepare your data and then you again add this function for plot and then you will have uh, a box plot and there you will also see an exercise for density plots which are kde uh, and those will produce some density plots similar to box plots but in a different visual format in the lesson what you will see is the syntax for visualizing the data you will get a coding challenge where you will try some of the different uh, visual outputs and then try to fill in the blanks in code that has to be fixed for it to work. Then you will receive a full interactive notebook that you can view and you will see there an assignment. So to submit the assignment, just copy this notebook over to your own Google Drive, write out the code with whatever assignment you got, and then share that with one of your mentors in the program. So again, how to learn to do this on your own. You learn the syntax, different types of plots, why are they useful and how to use them. Then coding challenge, so how to write it yourself and try it. Then you will get the interactive notebook and then you submit the assignment. That's it for now. We'll see you in the next lesson.